Welcome to Exometric number 790. Hey, if you want to download this workbook, 788 to 791, click on the link below the video. Hey, in this video here, we have an interesting topic. We have this data set, and it's arranged um, with field names at the top, but we need to take this data set and turn it into this data set. Now, properly set up data always has field names in the first row and records in each subsequent row. And in database, and you always have a unique identifier. So here, student name is the unique identifier, right? So there's only one. There's no duplicates allowed in this uh, column. But look at this. We want to take Joe, list Joe five times, take the names of the classes where the grades are, and repeat them. Notice it's math to chemistry, math to chemistry. And then take these and list them vertically. Now, this data set here still has field names at the top and records in rows, but it doesn't have a unique identifier. If we had one here, which we don't need, it would be a test number, right? So there's duplicates here, so this can't be the unique identifier. So we'd have to have something like, you know, test transaction one, two, three. All right. So from this data set here to this data set, let's click on 790. Actually, let's look at this just for a moment. We're going to use a lookup function. And the first thing we need to look up is names. So the lookup range is going to be here. But watch this. When I'm copying, when I have a formula here and copying it down, Joe was the first item. So I need to have in my index function, which we used for lookup, it needs to say first item, first item, first item, first item, first item, second item, second item, et cetera. So we need the pattern right here. You can see these ones and then these twos. For this one, it's slightly different. Our lookup values are going to be this way, and we'll use index. But as we copy down, we need to get the first, second, third, fourth, fifth. One, two, three, four, five. But then when we get past five, we need to go, need to go back to one, two, three, four, five. Finally, over here, we're going to use a, a VLOOKUP, and we're going to look up the name over here. Notice there's no uh, duplicates in the source row, so we can look up this. But as we copy the formula down, I need second column, third column, fourth column, fifth column, sixth column. So here's the patterns of numbers we need to generate. It's 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And then for VLOOKUP, the column number, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So we're going to come over to this sheet here. First, let's just see if we can invent the number incrementers. And I have other videos on this, but I'll go through it here. The first one is we want 1, 1, 1, 2, 2, 2. So I'm going to use the rows function. The rows function is kind of be the inside of, of all three of these formulas here. Now I'm sitting in E12, so I'm going to say E and lock with a dollar sign, the row reference 12, colon, E12. What this does, it says 12 is locked as we copy down, but this 12 is not. So when I copy it down, when you get down here, you can see an ex it's an expandable range. There's 12, 16. The 12 up here was not locked, so it turned to 16. So that, of course, 12 to 16, there's five rows. That's not what we want. We want 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2. So let's uh, change this a little bit. Let's just see what happens when you take this rows and divide it by 5. Now, why 5? I'm going to click Escape here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. There are five records that need to be extracted. That means Joe needs to be repeated five times. There's going to be five uh, scores and five words to uh, extract also. So I'm actually going to come here and hard code, um, not hard code the five into the formula. I'm going to count. Uh, count as a function that will count non-empty cells. That's perfect for counting words here. So there's five of them. That way, if we ever insert a column and add a new class here, this will update and all of our formulas up will update. Also, oh, OK, so now let's come over here. And what happens if we divide this number incrementer by 5? And I'm going to lock it in all directions. Hmm. So 0.24681. Well, we could take that and use the round up function. If we round 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.4, 0 0.81 up, it'll give us 1 all the way around. So I'm going to use the round up function. And I'm going to say round, that's the number to round. Number of digits, 0 tells it to round to the integer. So I'm going to put a 0 there, Control Enter, double click, and send it down. So now we have our 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 
and then we got our threes down there. All right, so that one will work. So we'll use these numbers in a moment in our index, but in our index lookup function, that'll be our row number. But now I want to talk about this one, and I want to go back over to the sheet 790 answer. We could just, if it was totally hard coded, take this math, English, biology, chemistry, copy, go up to here, copy it. Let's say uh, click right here, go up to paste special down here, values, because I don't want to bring that stuff there, and transpose, right? And then we could copy this down. So watch this. I can grab this handle and just copy it all the way down, and it perfectly increments. That's fine if the classes are never going to change. But what if they're going to change? Or you're going to add more, or something like that. Or you're going to change this to whatever. Right? So I want to have this automatically change. So I'm going to control Z here. So that's why we're going to need to figure out 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I'm going to come back over to 790. All right, so now let's build a little formula. We're going to do that same inside thing, rows. I'm in F12, so I'm going to say F, dollar sign to lock the 12, colon 12, F12. Copy this down. That gives me the same thing. Ah, but how do we get 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5? Well, let me ask you a question. What's 1 divided by 5? It's 0 remainder 1. What's 5 divided by 2? It's 0 remainder 2. What's 5 divided by 5? The, it's 5 remainder 0. So we're going to use the remainder function, and that's called mod. There's the number in the numerator, comma, and the divisor, or the, the denominator, is going to be this 5. All right, so this should give us 1 divided by 5 is 0, remainder 1. So it better give us 1. Now, 1 all the way to 0, we're actually going to need to get this to 0. This 1, 2, 3, 4. So I'm going to come here and subtract 1, minus 1. That'll give us what's 0 divided by 5. It's 0, remainder 0. Now we got 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Boom, all we have to do is add 1, plus 1. So that right there. Double click and send it down. Finally, we need for VLOOKUP, we're going to need a 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So I'm simply going to take this, actually just copy it over. Instead of adding 1, we're going to add 2. All right, now each one of these different number incrementers are going to be the row number, or in this, this case, the column number for uh, the VLOOKUP. I'm going to use these inside of the lookup functions. But watch this. I'm kind of lazy. I'm going to copy these, click here, go up to Paste Special, um, I want formulas only. In earlier versions, or you have to click here and say formulas, right? Click OK. So I got my formulas there. Now I'm going to put this in edit mode. Remember, this whole thing here is just the row number, so now I'm going to say index. Index is a lookup function, the array, while well, I'm looking up these numbers. And I need to, as I copy down, go Joe, 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 and then switch to fill. So I'm going to F4 to lock it, comma, and there's the row number. Close parentheses, control enter. I'm going to copy it down. And later we'll test this, and we're going to test it and see how all of this updates no matter what you do up here, or almost no matter what you do up here. All right, this next one, we are not looking up the range here. The lookup range is going to be here. Notice we need a column number, but we're going to learn something interesting about index. The array, not here, but here, F4 to lock it, comma. Now, this index function is programmed. If the lookup, the array right here, is one dimensional, meaning there's one row, columns. Here it was one column, lots of rows. But as long as it's one dimensional, the row number stands for column or row. So we just leave it there, and it will know to get as it copies down. Remember, it's going 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So I close parentheses and double click and send it down. Looking good so far. The last little bit here is this is going to be the column number inside of VLOOKUP. So I'm going to say VLOOKUP. The lookup value is going to be Joe, comma, the table array. 
This is the first column with a lookup value all the way to the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And I'm going to F4 to lock it, comma, the column index. That's it right there. And we're definitely coming to the end. And the range lookup is going to be comma 0 for exact match. All right, so now we have, in essence, done backwards. Usually we have bad data like this, and we need to collapse it, literally look up uh, multiple items, and then return all of these in rows, right? But this was a quite an interesting one. Now let's test it. Um, let me insert a, uh, a Tom here. And ones everywhere. And I don't think I've copied this down, but we can see now it's all working just fine. So we didn't copy this down far enough, but and we'd probably need to put like an if. But I'm not going to do that in this. We'd have to put an if error to, to hide the errors. Maybe I'll do that at the end. So that way works. We could see that way. What about if we went like this, change this to um, uh, Excel? Right, so then the Excel's update. What if we went like this? Right, highlight this and right click insert cells and shift to the right. Again, it's got zeros right now, but what if we put um, advanced Excel? Right, we can see the advanced Excel popping up, and then there were just, just for the heck of it, I'll put ones. Oh my heavens, look at that. Totally updates uh, in every which uh, direction. Notice this updated too. Now, if you wanted to finish this off, you do the if error in 2007 or 10, the value, and you just come to the end, comma, the value. If that value comes out to be an error, then what do you want in the cell? I'm going to put double quotes, close parentheses. Do it to each one. Come to the end, comma, double quotes. And then right here. If error, and then I can double click and send these down, all three different formulas, Brrrp. jump to the bottom, and then I'm going to extend it down a bunch. Oh, so this one doesn't come out to be an error. We'd actually, I didn't think about that. We'd have to amend um, something here. Uh, this many times this many. So uh, number rows, how about equals columns, equals column. Only I could spell columns. And I'm going to highlight this. Notice we're going to do it this way. So if any columns get inserted, this range will uh, expand. That will give us 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, how many? One, two, three, four, five, six times rows. And so this one would have to not be if error. But how about this? Uh, if rows, we need another little incrementer. I could actually just copy it from here. If the number of rows, as we go down, remember, that just flat goes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Anytime that's greater than this, locked, then I want, so that the logical test is going to be when the rows are greater than this 36. The value if true is going to be double quotes, comma, and the value of false is that thing. So double click and send it down. So now we should, uh, we don't need no biology and physics. Oh, yes, we do. We do. But let's just say we right click delete. That's going to, I'm going to say shift cells left. And let's just see if everything updates. And sure enough, updates perfectly. That's pretty wild there. So, all right, we'll see you next trick.